Welcome back to Sail Hub. We're on part three of our hull material series and this week we're covering aluminium. We're going to cover positives, negatives, what situation it's good for with sailing and if this is the hull for you if you're looking for a boat. We've teamed up with Sherry from a sailing YouTube channel called Vets Tales. Now these guys have an aluminium boat called Chuffed. They're super knowledgeable and they've gained their knowledge from a full restoration of Chuffed and they're now sailing the high seas and if you're an animal lover and you're interested in an aluminium boat, then their channel's for you. Let's get stuck in. And this is a piece of aluminium. This is eight millimeters thick. It's probably used on the base of certain boats. It's 5,000 grade. You also get 6,000 grade, etc. There's very different properties from different aluminiums. Again, we're not gonna go into that as we did in the steel, but your builder will know all about that. Fantastic material to build boats out of. It is indefinitely a light material. A lot of aluminium boats in the 80s, 90s, they were made out of aluminium because in general, it can be built very thin, it can be built heavy as well, it's up to you, and it can perform really well. So you can create nice rounded shapes in two planes, so creating convex or concave shapes, and some by stretching the material or something similar to, or something like an English wheel, which is effectively two rollers which squash the material. So now we can create round chines, still made out of plates, but they're so nicely rounded that you would never know they were made out of plates. So a lot more hydrodynamic. So the performance is going to be there. Yeah, so you can create a performance race boat if you like, although nowadays there's better materials for that. But even now for performance cruisers, people that want to go fast, they want to keep the weight of their boat down so their light air performance is better. This is definitely a way to go. Hi everybody, it's Dr. Shetty here from Chuffed Adventures. We wanted to give you all a bit of a rundown on why we chose an aluminium boat and the things we like about it and the things we don't like about it. The disadvantages of an aluminium boat is that it can be harder to find people to do repairs. With a fiberglass boat, you can find the material you need and generally a lot of people are knowledgeable in how to work with fiberglass. Less people are knowledgeable about welding aluminium. It does take specialized equipment, uh, but it's a little bit harder to weld generally than steel. And the type of aluminium is very important. Chuffed is made from a marine grade aluminium, but there's multiple marine grade aluminiums and you have to match the right ones to each other as well as match the right welding rods. So it becomes a little more complicated to repair. However, I do love having an aluminium boat because she's really strong and very lightweight. She sails well, and the be another benefit of an aluminium boat, which isn't true of all aluminium boats, but is true of Chuffed, is that she has a swing keel. And this is kind of a common feature in a lot of the French built aluminium boats, like Chuffed. Um, this means we can beach her, it means we can go really, really shallow in the anchorages. And because she's aluminium and so strong, we don't have to be quite so worried about hitting things. Um, it's still better not to, but we hear a lot of horror stories about people hitting whales and sinking boats. That shouldn't happen to Chuffed. So that's a really good thing with the aluminium. In terms of construction, yeah. obviously you might just buy, it's not like you're necessarily building your whole boat, but you're going to want to repair it. So on the welding side of things, am I right in saying it's a little bit harder to weld aluminium? It, it is. It's harder to weld aluminium and you are probably going to need some kind of inert gas to shield it from oxidization. So this kind of means you can MIG weld it, you can TIG weld it. There are other techniques that work, but for a boat that you want to stay afloat, that's basically what you're going to do. The other really interesting thing about aluminium is it has this amazing ability to create a second skin and it's almost instant. In the welding world, it is instant within seconds. But in the seawater world, within a day or two, you're going to create a hard fi film on the surface. Now that's... It's sort of white, isn't it? Yeah, like a chalky white. It's aluminium oxide. It's really, really strong. And that's actually what we make sandpaper out of a lot of the time, the and abrasives crazy. on it. So aluminium oxide is an interesting thing and this is why it's hard to weld. Basically the aluminium material has a melting point. We need to get to that melting point to weld it, but we have to break through the oxide first, which has a higher melting point. So that's why we have to use specialist welding techniques. Now, as far as being a ship goes, that aluminium oxide creates something which is impervious to corrosion. So ironically, the first what you think is a steel boat, or an aluminium boat, sorry, a metal boat is going to corrode in sea terribly. But regarding the, the elements, 
aluminium is probably going to go quite well and it does last really really well because the corrosion goes into the first layer and it goes no further so it's fantastic this is obviously a bit better than steel in that respect but one thing you cannot forget about this material is the galvanic corrosion right yeah so Galvanic corrosion is aluminium's nemesis. Mm -hmm, yeah. It doesn't like being next to other materials. So if you put this, basically there is a, a table of nobility, which is how durable, let's say, metal is. Now, if we put two pieces of material together, so a piece of aluminium and a piece of copper, which is particularly bad, let's say, aluminium is not as noble as the copper. And so what that means is that the aluminium will corrode instead of the copper. Basically what's happening is there's an electrical activity between aluminium and the copper and basically one is trying to steal electrons from the other one and degrading the aluminium. Uh, so this becomes sacrificial? Yeah, it wears away very quickly. So that being said, if you can keep them separate, that's really good. So is that a case of sheathing it or having a protective barrier or like yeah. a nylon washer or plug or? Nylon washers, nylon plugs, things like that to keep anything stainless, any different type of metal away from it. And another thing to remember is carbon fiber is also a big conductor of electricity. That has a serious galvanic problem too, not just with aluminium, but also with steel as well, does carbon. But basically we need to keep it away from other materials insulated by putting something non-conductive between the two. Now, another thing on conductivity is <laughs> when we plug into, let's say, a shore power, we need to have something along the lines of a galvanic isolator. And basically, when we plug into a wall, we have an earth system, a loop running. Now, if we do not have something to prevent flow of electricity back and forth, what can happen is anybody else with a faulty boat, where they have a short circuit or a leak of electricity into the water that electricity will find its way to the big aluminium boat because it's big in aluminium it conducts electricity and go back through the earth socket into the ground and, and basically wear the boat out along the way <laughs> so basically aluminium boats don't like that either so effectively the best thing to do with aluminium boat is try and not plug into a wall or have a really good galvanic isolator that you can trust in The big thing with aluminium is that if it's really well cared for, it's a very strong material that's very difficult to damage. If it's not well cared for, however, it can get corrosion, which is what happened to Chuffed, and it's why we had to do so many repairs on her. She had a combination, we think, of galvanic corrosion and electrolysis, which basically means that she had dissimilar metals touching, and where dissimilar metals touch, they start to trade electrons, and one of the metals gets sacrificed, and the aluminium, in our case, was touching steel and stainless steel, and stainless steel, aluminium sacrifices to stainless steel, so that is a problem. That can be rectified by trying to isolate the metals from each other, but that's sometimes easier said than done. She also had electrolysis, which is essentially when stray currents are running through the boat and start to degrade. The aluminium more or less acts like a battery and it starts to get degraded. Um, anodes generally help this. In Chaff's case, she didn't have anodes when we bought her and we had to put them on. But yeah, that's kind of the disadvantage of an aluminium boat is you really need to know how to care for it and it takes a bit more specialized care. However, if you can care for them well, the aluminium's in good condition and you maintain it, it's a really, really good material and in my opinion, the best material for a boat. So to summarize, what are the benefits of aluminium? So it's super easy to shape, meaning you can create something which is really quite unique, really nice and hydrodynamic and make a nice fast boat out of it. It's very light, but you gotta be very careful with galvanic corrosion and electrolysis. Excellent boat for long distance cruisers, excellent boat for expedition vessels. So there's one other thing we did not mention, which is aluminium being quite malleable. If you were to collide into something at sea, let's say you were unfortunate enough to hit a shipping container, then it's likely that aluminium will just bend and it generally does not puncture. Aluminium is more likely to deform but therefore you don't have a hole in your boat. So that's why it's commonly used for vessels in the Arctic, Antarctic, where you're likely to hit icebergs and things like that. Good to know. Good reasons. Yeah, <laughs> great piece of kit. Nice.
Well, I hope that's given you a really good insight into aluminium, whether you're just interested in the different hull materials or maybe you're on the lookout for your first or next boat. And a huge thanks to Sherry from Vets Tales for giving us their insight and their knowledge. If you'd like to know more about keeping an aluminium boat maintained, I did do an episode called Corrosion is Bad, Anodes are Good, or Anodes are Good, Corrosion is Bad on aluminium boats. And I talk about all of these things in greater detail, so you can check that out too. Stay chuffed please go and check out their channel. These guys are doing amazing things on sailing vessel shaft. They're cruising around remote countries delivering free veterinary care. So how cool is that? So go check them out and thanks again guys. And as ever, please like and subscribe. Feel free to comment, tell us your knowledge on aluminium or any questions you've got and we'll try and answer them. And we look forward to seeing you next week.